Keep an eye on the time. Keep an eye on the time, my little friend. Ooh, keep an eye on the time. Keep an eye on the time. Keep an eye on the time, my little friend. Ooh, 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 yeah. Oh, goodness. Welcome to the Hippie Report. Mmm, folks of all types. All of you are welcome. Welcome to the show. I'm leaving my hair down today because I'm about to get a haircut. This is what it looks like. God damn it, it's long. Look how long this shit is. It's longer than I need it. You know what I'm saying? Greetings to everyone. Hello, Wayne. Hello, Brian. Hello, uh, golly. They're coming by too quick. Oh, golly. What's up, Dr. Z? I hope you're doing very well. Blessings upon Dr. Z. Welcome to the Hippie Report, also known as the uh, the Yes Voice of Victory Hour. <sighs> the Believer's Yes Voice of Victory. We've tried to heal people on this show before. We are doing a, we are having a pandemic in the world. I do know that, and uh, and we have we've done our damnedest uh, earlier in this this series. This is episode like forty eight or something. We uh, we've done our damnedest to try and heal people through the to the to the power of televangelism. Uh, that went you know uh, it might have gone really well, but also uh, miracles do take time you know. Greetings to everyone equally and benevolently. May you all uh, experience the same joy uh, due to a beautiful, uh, blameless cherub in the in the perfect cloudy fields of heaven. There's a giant fly that seems to have joined me in my house today. It is roughly the size of a barn swallow. And uh, we may, in fact, uh, run into it uh, a little bit later. And if it comes near us, we will try not to, to murder it. Hmm. A couple flies, maybe, in the in the house today. Well, I don't know. I don't know where the fucking cat is or how, what she thinks her job is, but she's failing miserably. What's up, Heidi? What's up, Hand? How are you both doing? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yeah, why are there like flies in the house today? Is it the bodies? Nothing. Oh my God, I love smoking a joint. Sometimes it's just the perfect right answer. Happy 420. We've turned the show on just in time today. We're trying to pay attention to the time, but we forgot because we didn't have a catchy song about it. And then we wrote a catchy song, but then the show started. <coughs> it seemed silly to sing the catchy song at that point. So we tried to stop. Here we are. I really miss my hair, lady. I feel like this is beyond what it should be, man. My, my hair does a very Dawson's Creek kind of thing, a very kind of flippy thing uh, when it gets this length, and nobody's ever requested that, really. How are you? Amy, how are you? I hope you're doing very well. It's a beautiful day. <sighs> Perfectly rolled joints of finely grown marijuana <coughs> is the sponsor of the show today. Uh, recommended. Very recommended. You know, we're coming up on 50 episodes of this show, and those of you that have tuned in for almost every episode, I just want to let you know I appreciate it. Um, we try and keep it light here on this show. We try not to talk about many serious things. I sometimes post about very serious things in my Facebook world. That's because in real life, I'm, I'm a pretty serious person. Uh, and I do take the world very seriously. I'm trying to release that and just take it sincerely and have more fun with it, but I'm, I'm alas, uh, sort of a serious character. And, uh, ooh, the mailman. That's exciting. I think I'm probably gonna get some things in the mail. That's exciting. You ever, you ever sit around all day waiting for stuff to show up in the mail? It's like one of the high level joys of the world, you know? 
Just waiting on the old snail to show up. It's the shit, man. I love mail. I love this. I love the mail people. They're, they're just good. They're good people all the way around, as far as I'm aware. Was that in? You say, great, you look good. Oh, golly. Well, thank you very much. This was a jacket uh, gifted to me by a lover, matter of fact. Not so very terrible long ago. It's uh, velvet, and uh, it is probably my most beautiful clothing item right now. Sort of sweet. Uh, and uh, I do think of that person when I wear this. If you'd like to buy me a jacket, uh, you can either send me money to my Venmo and let me pick it out, or you can uh, you can uh, mail me a thirty-eight uh, regular slim fit. I prefer, uh, and uh, golly, I'll just wear it every single day. <laughs> What's up, Holly? Thank you very much. What's up, Mandy? How are you? <sighs> Doing beautifully, I hope. How could you help it? Hello, Martin. I hope you're having a very wise and thoughtful day. How could you help it? Fizzy water. I'm about to drink a fucking fizzy water, but you know what? Uh, not a sponsor of this show. I don't want you to go out thinking that, like this show uh, recommends said fizzy water. Hell no. We just like it fizzy because we know the fish haven't fucked in it. Welcome back. Peace and love. Love and life. Is anybody into Ram Dass out there? Is anybody into Terrence McKenna out there? I found myself talking about these people to a friend earlier today by way of FaceTime. And um, I, I don't know if you've ever checked those people out, but my holy trinity of, uh, you know, my kind of way of thinking that I like, my holy trinity is uh, Alan Watts, Ram Dass, and Terrence McKenna. And I think like, oh, my joint keeps going out. If I were to put those in classic Christian theology kind of terms, I think I would say Alan Watts is God position. Ram Dass is Christ position and Terence McKenna is Holy Spirit position in the Trinity. And symbolically, what I guess I mean is like Alan Watts is where like kind of the foundation of how I think the world probably works. I do think that he, he and I kind of agree and when I hear him it makes a lot of sense to from what I've experienced and you know, trying psychedelics and thinking real hard. And um but also, there's this dude, Ram Dass, who sort of sets me free from a lot of those practicalities um, about how the world actually works and allows more mystical kind of magical thinking. And then I would say, for me, Terrence McKenna would be in that third trinity position of the, uh, the spirit, which, which is sort of like the active ingredient, I would say in the Trinity, uh, sort of like the, uh, the the fucking gasoline in the engine, so to speak, is sort of that position. And that's what I think Terrence McKenna is for me, because he talks a lot about psychedelics and sort of their interaction with uh, philosophy, which of course is a lot of what Ram Dass talks about as well. Uh, and golly, Alan Watts as well. So it's all, it's all that topic. Boy, I don't know why I started fucking... Yeah, I do, because I was talking to my friend earlier. Does that bother anybody? If that bothers you, you can totally tune out, and next time I'll talk about sandwiches or something. Ooh, you want to talk about sandwiches? I don't mind. I don't mind. We don't have to talk about heavy stuff. We can talk about sandwiches. You know? Brett, you're into Terrence McKenna? Man, I am. I am into Terrence McKenna and have been for a long time. What's a long time? I'm 34. I've probably been into Terrence McKenna since I was in... Cycle 27 or 28, and then uh, by the time I was 29, I started I started allegedly exploring with uh, some psychedelics, uh, which of course 
psilocybin is decriminalized down in Denver. So some of this episode can just be directed to those few people in the world who are allowed to uh, have consciousness control. A little freedom of what they want, how they want their brain to work. And, you know, maybe I should just re read a disclaimer real quickly. I mean, where's the, something to read all the disclaimer off of? I don't have any papers near me. I wanted to fake it. That would have been so fun. Uh, but uh, maybe, like, you know, Andy Epler, is, when he, whenever he talks about uh, doing any kind of illegal activity, he is only playing a figurative uh, story out. And he is playing a character who has allegedly had these experiences. Andy Epler himself is a perfect virgin monk who uh, has, has never had sex or or uh, altered his consciousness in any way that isn't explicitly shown on screen. Uh, anyone associated with this show explicitly denies any knowledge or uh, uh, involvement in any illegal activity whatsoever. There you go. Is that helpful? <laughs> kind of helpful. Not legally useful, but very fun. Maybe, hopefully. I, uh, I do, I do think that something is missing from the day-to-day -day experience of folks in the world. And I'd say a lot of people find it through church or find it through, uh, other kinds of training, but I do, I do think, um, I don't know. I think uh, ex expanding your mind is uh, one of the most important tasks set before you by the simulation. Ooh, hold on one sec. I've got a, an alarm going off. How can I not cover the camera completely? There it is. My, my alarm for my haircut just went off because I'm going to get a haircut soon. And then I'll, I'll feel good about myself. I have to like hurry up and smoke this joint and uh, put on my face mask because my haircut person comes to me. And and um, usually I can like smoke a joint and chit chat with that person while they work me over. Um, and she uh, developed a hairstyle for me based on my skull shape and, and, uh, and requests. I did a YouTube video about it if you'd like to see how that haircut comes together. But uh, she calls it, well, we, we named it together. My haircut is called the vaguely fuckable. I told you, just put me in the window of like what a handsome dude does with his hair. You know, I don't care if it, I don't care if I look like a Land's End model. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to look vaguely fuckable. Recommended, fully recommended makeup or hairstyle. Boy, this sure isn't what it's supposed to be. You know, it's not supposed to be this. This is weird. Looks like a lot. Looks like a lot. Anyway, I know you all feel me, man. The quarantine thing has been a really fun uh, exercise, and yet I'm just super duper over the haircut part of it. Just a thought. Oh, Brett, did you just put... Uh, a link to the MAPS website. That'd be an interesting thing to visit if you're, if you're interested in psychedelics. And you should be, of course, uh, at least from like a scientific perspective. My opinion is they're very interesting. And, uh, you know, sort of like a guaranteed experience, which is uh, rare in the world, you know? Especially psilocybin is, is just a very guaranteed sort of mystical experience you know psilocybin is kind of like the original religion that's what i think that's my personal opinion that's my opinion oh i agree with you maddie i do think they maybe ought to open salons eventually but uh more like i think they ought to open um centers like big parks that are like closed in and it's like you can go there and legally trip and you can like uh, sign up for like a spa day basically and you just check the fuck in 
and they're all independently run or whatever, but you just you take some mushrooms and hang out at a park. I think that that could be a real, real good therapy center type idea uh, under some good circumstances. But I, of course, I'm under the opinion uh, that every time we come across a problem in society, it might be interesting to think about it from a perspective of like, how can we solve this problem with more freedom instead of less freedom? And then, uh, I don't know, are there ways to do it without making a law? <laughs> you know, I think like the, the drug problem in America is a health problem. And I think it ought to be treated that way. Uh, and if you think psilocybin and, and things like cannabis are in a group of uh, dangerous drugs, I think you might be right as far as like, you know, the establishment and kind of like the oppressors of the world are concerned. I do think they're a little dangerous to those type of folk. But if you don't stand with those folks, golly, I don't think it's dangerous to you at all. You and me, we gonna be just fine. Now they're mean drugs, golly, I think there's some mean ass drugs. And if I didn't talk about it in this episode, I'm probably super duper against it. Anyway, just an opinion. I'm very picky about things I put in my brain because I'm trying to protect myself. But obviously I smoke lots of weed and I just, boy, couldn't recommend it more. Uh, most useful uh, chemical tool that I know about, I think. And that's come from a person who like has dealt with alcohol issues in the past and you know, never has let things like um, how any of the classic mean drugs we dare not name or whatever, never let any of that shit in my life. Weed, though, poof, every day, man. Every day. Every single day. Unless I leave town to a place that it's illegal, then zero. Because <laughs> it's just such a silly thing to be putting handcuffs over. It's just like so genuinely not uh, a dangerous thing in the world, but like, they they will put you in fucking handcuffs about it, and I know because I've been put in handcuffs about it before, and I felt real silly about it, you know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, just some thoughts, random thoughts, I guess, about like chemicals today, and and mostly kind of positive things to say about specifically. Uh, psychedelics like psilocybin pretty much in favor uh, on the hippie report is that a super big surprise well, i don't think so is it is it really bro you keep it positive every time oh thanks man thanks brad i hope so man i do try and keep it positive i'm no news reporter i don't have to talk about anything i don't want to talk about and I don't, I don't even have to tell you the truth. Did you know that? I don't have to fucking do that. I'm not a journalist. I'm an artist. Like, uh, I deal in subjective truth anyway. And so, like, I don't know. It's just an interesting position to be in. Uh, I do try to tell you the truth. And I try and live my life in a way that just, like, uh, shows I'm kind of on the level. That's what I try and be. Uh, I try, I'm doing it on purpose. I'm trying to help. That's why I talk about sensitive topics sometimes. But I do talk about it from a positive perspective. Sensitive topics, not very serious topics, I don't think. Uh, or at least I try not to be super duper serious on this show. It's mostly a community smoke out. I'm just happy to be smoking some weed with you. It's a pretty good time. It's a pretty good time almost every single time. The other times, the shows are over much quicker. And... Um, and those, those times are okay, too. Finally, I got some weed today. Oh, I just feel so good about it. You know? I'm trying to not just, like, talk with it dangling out of my mouth or whatever, because I find that's probably not the most classy way to do it. But, um, you know. God damn it, I love smoking a joint. What's up, Tasha? I hope you're doing very well. Beautiful day, I suspect, up in your neck of the woods. I'm down here in Longmont, of course. It is a very beautiful day here. I will probably get my hair cut here in the next little while. 
and then in a perfect world, once the sun goes down, whip my clothing off and go out and do a little bit more garden. Night gardening. Night gardener. The night gardener. Andy Epler, the night gardener. I'm here to protect the tulips in the evening. That's, that's my impression of myself. Codename Dangle. <laughs> yeah, Brett, maybe, maybe, maybe. I did buy some very hilarious underwear lately. I've been, I've been in sort of a fun slash flirty mood and I bought some funny underwear. And it, there's like some substantial dangle factor on the particular pair of underwear I'm thinking of. They're hilarious. They're a flower print. Anyway, I'm sure everyone wanted to know that. I just think it's funny, man. It's funny to have funny underwear. You know, if you're the only one that ever sees it or whatever, or, or a very select group of people ever see it, why wouldn't you wear some funny underwear? What do you, you know what I mean? I watched this thing the other day that uh, it was Tom Ford and he was talking about fashion. And Tom Ford's a, a very interesting artist um, who I follow loosely. I think they're a very interesting artist. And um, Mr. Ford and shit is talking about uh, the classic important things to have or whatever if you're a man. I'm all alone. I'm all alone. I'm all alone, right? <laughs> I just, I'm just talk, speaking to the wind now. Let me see what happens if I quickly change subjects. I, I really enjoy smoking weed, and I think it's right for you. I think you ought to look into it. I think you ought to not be in a hurry when you roll your joints, because uh, then they go out when you're live on the internet, and you have to keep relighting it. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to go back to the previous subject. Um, <laughs> he's talking about, Tom Ford is talking about the essential things a man should consider. And he's saying you should buy new underwear and new socks every six months. And I think that's like a really interesting idea. Because you really don't need that many pair of those things. You know what I mean? And having a fresh pair of those things is so pleasurable. It is pleasurable. It is pleasureful. Uh, having fresh socks, having fresh underwear, that's the shit. Brett and Mandy are talking about no underwear at all. That's fine. I don't feel like no underwear at all is going to be an option for everybody. Um, so I, I think some some people they they need they need a little bit of like oh coiling, let's say, and so underwear is going to need to be a thing. So just just straight talk there. Just straight talk there. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching the Hippie Report today. What did we report on today? Oh, my God. I guess it was mostly about, like, drugs and then a little sex at the end. Oh, my God. When I upload this for the TV people, they asked me to rate it myself, like content rating. I never know what to answer this. I always say PG-13. <laughs> Right on. Well, I hope all you guys have an excellent day. And uh, I hope that when you're out gardening, you don't just go looking over the fence at your neighbors. Because it turns out some of them might be out there gardening naked. And they just want a little privacy every once in a while in their goddamn garden. But they're afraid. They're on property. <laughs> some of these people. Some of Some alleged people out there. They're afraid on their own property to, 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 to be naked out of the public view. Just, I don't know, be thoughtful out there. So, bye. <laughs>